What is up everyone? Chris with Gatekeeper Media. From us here, we wanna say thank you so much to our 2022 Patreon supporters. If it wasn't for your support, we would not have made it through those late nights editing, making sure we got our next day coverage out for everyone. Uh, so from us here, truly, we wanna say thank you. With that being said, we have a huge announcement of a really big care package that we'll be doing on our Patreon. So we will be having five tiers. The first four lower tiers are things such as like RPM discs, some Dismania, um, some other things such as like this Gatekeeper Mini here, sweatshirts, things like that. But the grand prize, that one winner, has an amazing offer here that we're putting out. And we did this last year as well. Basically, from every single Disc Golf Pro Tour event from last year, we have a stamped disc from that event. The grand prize winner is going to be getting every single disc from the 2022 Disc Golf Pro Tour. So we have Jonesboro here, here's Texas States, we have Waco. Um, and with that, you're gonna be getting upwards of almost 15 discs. We also have the Disc Golf Pro Tour Championships as well as the Match Play Disc. So huge, huge disc allotment really here. So that's gonna be our grand prize for everyone here. If you wanna sign up, you can head over to patreon.com forward slash gatekeeper media. And starting at $5 a month, you could be entered into these care packages that we'll be giving away. Every single one will be uh, announced on March 24th, which is gonna be a Friday. And with that, good luck. And thanks for all the support. $5 a month on Patreon. Win yourself some really cool plastic. Again, from Chris here at Gatekeeper Media, thank you so much. It's a great day in Waco, Texas for the Waco Annual Charity Open. We're on Gatekeeper Media's coverage of the Chase Card, Round 3, Front 9. And I'm Andrew Fish, joined here by Nathan Queen. What an exciting event it has been so far for these first two rounds. Uh, final round Sunday, and we've got, I don't know, 15 players possibly with an opportunity to shoot a hot round and jump up and maybe have a playoff or take the outright lead as you see our entire chase card here tied at 18 under par. Yeah, it seems like this kind of happens just about every year at Waco. Uh, a lot of players in the mix, and that's some of the fun of disc golf on uh, on shorter wooded tracks like this. Yeah, right here, the entire top 10 within three strokes, and you've got more people that are going to be able to make a move just behind that. Uh, into these bag checks, Nate Sexton, pretty simple bag here. Firefly and Dart, going to see some rat the new Toro and some rocks, um, Sidewinder Thunderbird, and Firebird most likely. If you followed Gatekeeper Media at Las Vegas Challenge, we had Paul Macbeth there, putting with the Lunas, throwing buzzes for mid-ranges, and uh, with the stability, I'm expecting to see some Captain's Raptors and Forces in the open. Cole Radolin, newly with DGA this year, um, putting with the Stone Steady BL, and uh, he told me that he's leaning heavily on his Quake and Aftershock for uh, throwing mid-ranges in these woods. Yeah, and then getting into Kyle Klein's bag, gonna be putting and throwing those logics. Probably see all of the MD flavors, one through five. Uh, FD3, and he's got the cloud breaker for those uh, long shots out in the open. Hole one, out of bounds to the left and right, as will happen on many of these open holes at Waco. Uh, Options are a gap shot or a big forehand hyzer or big backhand hyzer. The wind is going to play with a pretty severe tailwind today. Salem, Oregon, representing Innova champion Nate Sexton. Nate Sexton wearing his Sunday Oregon State. Wonder if he planned that disc to match. Something to watch for. Something to watch for with Nate. He's going to rely heavily on his forehand, as few backhands off the tee as possible. And when you've got a forehand like that, why would you go to the backhand? He gets it up Second well in inside the, the circle. For your chase card. From Huntington Beach, California, representing Team Discraft, your six-time world champion, Paul McBeth. As Paul steps up, I see those um, 
banner flags waving in the background seem to be the most we've seen moving on hole one so far this weekend. Yeah, and that definitely turns this from a very easy shot, you know, anything you want to throw into something that you've got to control well. You see Paul just kind of scudding that along the ground for half the half the length. in the order for your chase card from Hillsborough, Oregon, representing Team DGA, Cole Redolin. What a talented young player here. I've got to play with him a little bit in my time up in the Northwest in Oregon and Washington. And um, just very impressive. He's got he's got a pretty good brain on him when he's out there. Uh, doesn't usually do too much that he doesn't have to do. And just easy power. Doesn't have to do a whole lot and he's got easy 500. Finds the back edge of the circle, the narrowest part of the Rally fairway. Your chase card. From Wyoming, Michigan, representing Team Dismania, Kyle Klein. And Kyle, like Cole, young gun. We've got a, two veterans, two young guys on this card. And the ease of that distance is so impressive. <laughs> the two veterans down the middle and the two young guns over top to the right. Every gonna, everybody going to be inside the circle. I would look at that as a very good sign for Cole. Last year, uh, he would throw the disc as well as anybody, and sometimes the putter would let him down. If he's able to you know, sustain the confidence and make his putts look that clean, we could be in for a long year of coal. Yeah, and headwind putt to start right there. Uh, not even one on the easier side of things. But like you said, very solid. Very clean. And Sexton just on the left side. Going to knock it on in there. Two for two so far. Yeah, curiously, these prodigy baskets like that left low more than they like right low. Kind of... Uh, reverses the strong side weak side right because they push so fast it i think i think is why it pushes fast so it pushes that hyzer down instead of out moving into hole two 631 foot par four gonna be playing on the easier side today i would guess than yesterday as we do have kind of that tailwind behind us maybe a bit of left to right pushing towards the water uh, but easy to get some good distance off of this. A little bit of a hyzer stand up. You want to make sure you don't turn it over in this wind where it could drag you to that OB sidewalk. And no danger there for Sexton. He doesn't try to kill the disc. He just throws a very clean, efficient backhand hyzer, leaving him with a forehand into the green. Paul playing more of the inside line, left of the first tree, but same idea. That might even have been a fairway driver. Yeah, it looked like it came out of his hand fast, but wasn't flying quite as quickly as I was expecting it. Uh, but very well placed shot. Gonna be in great position to get up and down. Ooh, just a little bit inside. He was probably looking to go outside of that tree that he just barely missed, but nonetheless, gets good distance on it still. Gonna have a nice, easy approach shot. There's so much open space on hole two that there's not a reason to, to go super aggressive. Like, when you're getting 93% fairway hits by U-Disc stats, uh, I think you kind of just put it in play and trust your up shot game. Going back to that same disc he threw on hole one. Going to put it closer than he did on hole one. Looking to start two for two.
Nathan, I think a theme to watch for is uh, who can make their, their putts easy and low stress, especially on elevated baskets by being on the tailwind side. Can you talk about the importance of that? Yeah, especially on these elevated baskets. If you're putting into a headwind on these elevated baskets, um, it's very difficult to gauge the amount of lift that you're going to get. You already have to be throwing nose up because the basket is up and then that wind just grabs it very quickly. If you can place it, you know, inside 15 feet and with a tailwind, you're not going to have to think about that putt much, which can really save a lot of energy towards uh, to go towards the end of these rounds. And Radolin well offline there. He did have the tailwind putt, but uh, seemed like his hips kind of turned early. Yeah, and with that easy power that he's got, even on his putt, he's going to have a pretty difficult comebacker now. Oh. And trying to control that headwind just doesn't quite get the height on it. Flag's pretty gentle, Klein deliberate, and is able to squeak it in. And Paul making it look like there's not much wind there. He's had quite a bit of practice at that. Yeah, very solid strike from Paul. On hole three, a bunch of options here. Most common is gonna be the backhand flex shot. Again, we're playing with a tailwind, so trusting something that will fight back up the hill, another elevated basket. And there also is a forehand line to the left that I expect Sexton to take. This is well thrown. Very well thrown, and I was just about to point out it's a bit of a difficult wind for that shot today with it being that tailwind left to right because of the possibility of what did just happen to Sexton there. He got that big skip and ended up getting pushed over to the edge of that hill and rolling away. Uh, so very great shot, but unfortunate ground play. Good shot by Paul. He'll be circle's edge. And I appreciate how wholesome Nate is, that his reaction to that is is not a cussin', but to just say, holy cow. <laughs> Klein pushes it too far, not quite able to fight back up the hill. And that that is part of the challenge here. Yeah, and I think those new trees with the great shot here from Cole is able to fight back up, going to be in a bullseye. But those new trees are um, as little as they are. I think they have a big deal to do with being the ease of pushing back to the left. You used to be able to throw on a hyzer the entire time and make sure it goes left. It's Kyle just missing short on that one. Uh, but with those new trees there, you have to throw it a bit flat and uh, have the nose up to really make sure you get that fade. Yeah, I appreciate you identifying that, you know, there's a couple different angles in play. It's not just stability, it's wing angle and nose angle. Just looked a bit odd off of his hand immediately. I don't know if his fingers just popped a little bit too much, but was high right away. Gets the par no problem though. And Klein to do the same.
with uh, with so many players in contention, it's going to be really key to get off to a hot start, especially these first three. Nate Sexton, I am sponsored by Innova Champion Discs, Pound Disc Golf Bags, Double G Craft Jerky, Idio Shoes, and Power Grip. feels like the start of the beast course out here on the Brazos 440 one foot par four that averaged over par yesterday uh, not quite over par today but pretty impressive as far as design ability to have a good hole that's only 441 feet that the best players in the world are not birdieing every single time Likely to see a lot of backhand mids like this. And that's that's only feet away from being gold. Uh, Radalin may have the opportunity to still scramble, but from an obstructed stance. And this could be big. Might have done again. I heard tell of a, a circle two look for Eagle from Sexton. And that looked like an old cherry pie orc, I think. Yeah, I could definitely see that orc getting up there. That one just a little bit inside, but still going to be in a great position. Macbeth with a buzz. Mild improvement over what uh, what Cole had done. And I think they, they both got left enough that they'll be able to work something into the green. I like this a little bit more. It's pushing straighter. Uh, and kind of a fortunate bump. Yeah, going to be dead center fairway. Did you see Cole having to stretch out a little bit, but still has some arm room here. What a shot. From a position like this, Cole does very well to park the basket. I think the responsible play is to deliberately try to saw it off a little bit and get to circle's edge short. Because the finer you try to play this, the more you're bringing the Brazos into play and the more you're bringing the back wall in. Kyle pushing a little fast, almost bringing the Brazos into play, but does stop and is going to have a nice birdie look. Oh, dang it. Oh, bad kick too. Good golf play from Nate Safeton. And boy, the body <laughs> language says it all. Macbeth hates having to do that. Yeah, you could tell he had already gone through every scenario trying to figure out a way to <laughs> not do that. <laughs> Good birdie by Klein. A 44% with birdies and 44% with pars. Uh, so, not bad there. Hole five at 264 feet. Uh, pretty much a tunnel shot that's going to go up a couple tiers. Maybe 20, 25 feet of elevation gain playing around 320 effectively. Uh, if you can carry some speed into the hill, it usually is going to bump you to the right and... Uh, hopefully take the speed off of it near the basket. Great shot there from Cole. 
Catching that log right there at pin height. Looked like it was slowing down either way, going to be inside the circle. But great height from him there. Never really had a chance to hit that hill and not make it up. Pretty similar by Klein. A little more of a turnover than just the drifting shot. I will say that the uh, there are some fingers along the fringes of the fairway that can catch those higher shots, which is why the running into the hill play seems to be the optimal way. Oh, come on. Sexton Did some weird reactions on the ground. Throws it great, but he's right. Some weird reactions. Yeah, it looked like it was going to skip up nicely, then took off to the right. I think it caught that tree and kind of curled around a little bit. Paul just a little bit off left side, but gets good ground play. Going to be well inside the circle. Good start to the cards efforts on the green. Is it me? Okay. I really appreciate watching Nate Sexton putt. Um, so many players nowadays have that super fast, very firm spin putt. And um, it's, it's, it's really nice to watch kind of a push putt type of player that is a great putter. Um, it's not something you see as often anymore, but definitely a good style of putt. Hey guys, Paul McBeth here. Um, if you get a chance, go over to check out paulmcbethfoundation.org. We've got some cool projects coming up. You can always use donations, whether it's financial, discs, or even just manpower. Anything helps, so check out paulmcbethfoundation.org. Brings us into hole six, 257 foot, 67 foot, par three, I uh, want to push a mid-range straight, maybe a fairway driver or a putter also, uh, but just push it kind of straight and then let it fade towards the end. If you're throwing a backhand, uh, you're going to have more of a hyzer, hyzer flip to turnover shot. Oh, dang it, stupid military. <laughs> That's pretty standard for the forehand. Uh, that was coming in a little bit early, but will give Cole the opportunity at a circle's edge birdie look. And I, like I think I like the look. Yeah, the nose up on the, the mid range or putter forehand seems to be the way to get it all the way to the basket. Yeah, because it's not quite just a hyzer the entire time. You do need a bit of straight flight before you start moving off. And uh, that nose up is a good way to get that straight to fade. Looks like a Sexton Firebird. Oh, oh my goodness. Nate Sexton almost catching him an ace there, getting some metal. I wonder if anybody plays, uh, does the 135 on this card. He might have made him a few bucks there. I think, I think by now, uh, that's a little lowbrow for a U.S. champion. <laughs> oh my gosh, you pulled that so hard. You deserve that. <laughs> Not a great effort by Macbeth. Potentially good that the uh, the tree got in the way. There's a uh, there's a lot of jungle behind this basket. But look at Cole though. Four birdies in a row after carding the bogey on hole two and has not had a par yet. Yeah. I think in terms of like excitement quotient, that's what I'm looking for. Pars are not interesting. Give me everything else though. Well, I'll take all birdies and no pars. <laughs> I'll still pass on the bogeys. But yes, definitely exciting to watch that. 
I just think the plastic is very premium. It's a high quality material. The way the disc feels in my hand. I think it's the quality of plastic. It's unlike any other plastic that you'll find in the industry. The quality is better than any other company out there. Again, just consistent plastic. It's something I can consistently trust on every single throw. There's so many discs to choose from and I guarantee if you tried every disc in the lineup, you're gonna wanna put multiple discs in your bag. It's extremely high quality. You can only say so much that they have to eventually just try it themselves and see. This looks perfect. Off the basket, now it's rolling. It's headed for the OB. This needs to sit. Oh my goodness, it's safe. Right on the line. She's gonna have about a 30 foot putt for the win. Okay, here we go. The putt is up. Boom, it's in. Strong side with authority. What an incredible moment. Yes. Hole seven, there is a mandatory to go to the right and an initial tunnel shot leading out into an open field. At 429, it's pretty short, so you can either be real safe and just try to uh, chip a little backhand mid out there, or a flex forehand can be a more attacking eagle potential. Oh, nice and smooth down the fairway. Gets that slight bit of finish and is going to be in prime position. Maybe even have an opportunity to run that from 90 feet. Definitely. There's a, since the basket is on an upslope, if you're chain high at it, you're not going to go too far past. The danger is coming up short or uh, missing left right on your approach. Tough, uh, tough shot there for Klein. Pushes it far too straight, and Birdie may be out of the question from there. In fact, we're gonna get a little more pie from Sexton here. Oh, not quite what you're looking for. No, he's looking to play holes out of order right now. That that might be on Ten's fairway. Macbeth back to the buzz. And hug, hugs the tree line, which is probably good. It makes the more straight approach into the green. Kyle pushes it out. And yeah, should be pretty routine up and down from there. Yeah, very well played. See if Sexton's able to get out also. Pretty thick through here. From that position, if I'm then, I think I am trying to crash those woods on the left side, you know, hoping to poke through. And if you don't, you're still within, you know, 75 feet of the basket. Yeah, definitely a good play. Just crash it into those woods. There's an opportunity you could end up rolling down that hill and uh, being closer than that. Perfect approach by Macbeth and Cole leaving it high right. Can't quite get the fade in time, but still well inside the circle for his birdie look. And if you're keeping track of those score tickers down below, um, note that everybody's still in the top 10. Kyle has moved into a tie for first place. And Sexton Radalan tied for fourth right now. Cole has the five pack. Moves him to five under par now through seven. Uh, shout out again uh, to the Eagles we saw on this hole today. Yesterday there were two, today there were three. Uh, Zachary Nash, who we saw on the feature card the first round. Raven Newsom, player from North Carolina. And Joel Freeman got it two days in a row. Yeah, at some point, you're just being greedy, Joel. <laughs> I don't blame them. I'll take eagles anytime they come. <laughs> and that puts us on to hole eight, 213 foot, par three, pretty straightforward. 
don't go 215 feet and be a little bit right because then you're going to skittle on down that hill and probably be behind some bushes and have a pretty obstructed putt. Uh, so just distance control and stay left. Priority number one, make the gap. And then, as you say, good distance control. He'll be well inside the circle and still on the shelf. And Macbeth frustrated. I, I think I heard you did it again. So he must have a, a bad relationship with that left side. Yeah, early release, trying to make sure you don't go down that hill. Oh, and what a backstop for Kyle there. That one definitely had a good amount of steam on it to be able to get 40 feet or so past that basket. Another good tree backstop for Sexton. Paul from deep. Wow. Made it look too easy. I bet you he didn't do that before. I couldn't say you did it again on that one. Let's take a look, though. Look how easy that looked. Yeah, such clean spin. Manages the Anheuser. And uh, we saw some some crazy action on this hole in some earlier coverage. Um, you got to think Macbeth is playing for the win running a putt like that. Like the majority of us have no business even thinking about it. Cole on to the six pack now. Not sure he's old enough to buy one of those yet. <laughs> uh, fun statistic, Nate Sexton's cash streak has been active since Cole was three years old. <laughs> and he might have been thinking about that right there. <laughs> how, how young that kid is. And uh, ended up just a bit high there. It sat down for him, though, so not going to be too much trouble. Nice. And Klein gets his as well. Yeah, and we did have... An eagle of sorts on this hole as well. Adam Hammes able to card the ace. Way to be there, basket. Hole nine. One of the most technical shots out here. There's a low ceiling initially and then a snaking fairway. If you can get down to this flat and then turn the corner, the basket lies just over a valley and tucked behind a cluster of trees. Um, you really have to execute two high-level shots to make this work. Radalin up to the challenge. He almost threw it too well. Uh, if he bails out a touch earlier, he would be down on the flat. From there, it's he might be able to get the circle too, but that's about it. Yeah, that's what this hole seems to bring. Those last two, those last two trees down there, just seem to be a bit frustrating. You know, uh, you've you've navigated this entire fairway, missed that low branch all the little things sticking out, and then there's two trees right there that just keep you from being in the perfect spot. Yeah. Klein, good job Let's keeping go. the nose down, and he will funnel to the bottom. Uh, either a forehand or a backhand turnover could get him a birdie look. No backhand for Sexton. And this is big. This is huge, Nathan. I don't think it's far enough. Oh. Oh, and it Comes needed. Just short of the corner. Yeah, it needed to push straight just maybe 10 more feet before it started to fade right. And I think right. it had the spot. Oh. Cole getting pretty aggressive here, still trying to go for the birdie. Uh, I believe he got up there pretty well. Shouldn't have too much trouble left to get up and down for par. There is an out-of-bounds line about 90 feet left of the basket. It would take a severely errant shot to find it, but going up and over may bring it into play. Yeah, not sure where he landed, but 
I believe he stayed in bounds. As Sexton just a little bit too pinched off to get aggressive there. And pretty well done by Klein. Finds the front slope of the green, but we'll have a look for his birdie. Altogether, all pretty well managed thus far by the chase card. Showing you why they got here. Thanks. Yeah, absolutely. Um, the whole card still in that chase card, that top eight through eight holes so far. As Paul able to get out with just some wrist snap. Uh, that was a lot of skill right there to do that, although it did look fairly easy. And good course management by Cole. Not trying to go for too much. Um, that could bring his non-par streak to a, to a close. Klein's not interested in that. He's going to birdie hole nine. One of the few on the day. Not many happening. Yeah, just... 10% of the field. Uh, I believe that's 12 players, so that's uh yeah, one every or two every hour somewhere around <laughs> there. That's that's not a lot at all as Paul is able to card the par after going up high. And um what a front nine so far, man. Lots of green. Everybody playing well inside the top 10 still. Yeah, at this, at this point, everyone is still in the ball game, and that's as much as you can ask for from Chase Card. Uh, coming up on our leaderboard here, uh, you see Klein tied for first with that seven down front, and then a six, a five, and a four out there as well. Yeah, just one bogey on the entire card. That's great for the front nine. Adam Hammes, Kyle Klein, Calvin Heimberg all tied for the lead at this point. I would almost say still everybody on that leaderboard has a chance. Yeah, and don't miss this conclusion. Uh, Gatekeeper Media is thrilled that you've chosen to join us, and uh, we will see you on the back nine. For Nathan Queen, I'm Andrew Fish. We'll see you guys out there.